the kind of expectation created from the first episode that we read is uh, tremendous because the kind of suspense that we uh, read out of it so yeah the boy on the blue mountain right <laughs> The Boy on the Blue Mountain, a cinematic fantasy thriller by Joshua Newton, published by Bodhi Studios. I don't think I am writing this. I think this has been given. There is a download happening, and uh, because the kind of characters and the setting and the world, even the underlying theme. If I tell you, is 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 quite alien to to me. I mean, I I never thought in terms of Earth bursting and you know, becoming a totally different galaxy. So that's the uh, <clears throat> that's the premises. She sat curled up, cupping her mouth with her hands. trapped between her frail hopes and a bleeding death trying to breathe without a sound it was hard to breathe like that as it was hard to quell this fright the shudder of her body the thudding of her heart her feverish eyes were red warm as screams welled up inside but shimoko hushed them pressing her tiny palm over her mouth Her throat pulsed and ached with a pulse that refused to go. Any sound from her could bring them over. She was just six and tiny, a kitten to pick. She wanted to breathe, but all around was cold smoke. She wanted to run, but weren't humans everywhere? They had come, just as her mama said they would come. in a ritual fire raised in front of her hut a little while ago that seemed like long ago shimoko saw her mama pichoba taken from behind the bush the little one heard her mama's howls they dragged her up the stone altar where they held her down and sought through her neck pichoba's surprised head fell and rolled in the night mud brightened by torchlight the blood kept gushing out as if not knowing when to stop shimoko blinking and panting hard heard a sharp chant rising in chorus from the silhouettes of men and women swaying in a cruel amber light the boy on the blue mountain a cinematic fantasy thriller by joshua newton published by bodhi studios you need not think in terms of what my reader would like what my reader won't like you know i should remain open to what my heart to say and it will find its own readers because all sorts of people are around the world they they're all all there you know boy on the blue mountain is the first book in a series called magical chronicles of arthropia Uh, so ertopia happens to be an, a completely new galaxy by itself theo world is the basic imprint under which the series will be published uh publisher is bodhi studios so bodhi studios has an imprint theo world and theo world is publishing this series called magical chronicles of ertopia and under the series boy on the blue mountain is the first book and there will be further titles coming under that series all these metaphysical tools if we blindly dismiss them without enquiring without checking it out then i would say we are superstitious we are the superstitious and if we do it in the name of science then i would call science superstition whoever dismisses any phenomenon without examining it is a superstitious person so i would invite uh, 
even through Theo World. Theo World is a thriller. It it will certainly thrill you, and it takes you to a fantastic world, and you can enjoy the story like any other you know fiction you read. But the book is also going to challenge your concepts about living, about reality, about what you think is real. And if I can quote from this movie Matrix, it's very famous quote. It says that what you see is not what is real. So Theo World is going to explore it further, to rip the veil of Maya, and to help you see what is beyond that. I'm using fiction for that, so you can enjoy fiction in one place, and you get engaged with these kind of information, with these kind of a wisdom that uh, we normally don't come across in our everyday life another reason why i'm excited about theo world is uh, that uh, you know it's a it's obviously a thriller fantasy and it uh, has elements of uh, a thriller and um but but what i was trying to do with this novel boy in the blue mountain uh was to try to make it as much as visual as possible you know uh, could we make the the experience of reading a little more visual a little more but because this is the era of uh, instagram and netflix and you know it's a, it's a, it's the era of visuals so precisely why i reworked on the book on the draft uh, again and again till i could bring out uh, the element of uh, visual uh, in the sentences in the in the lines you know uh, as much as i could that was the attempt so in the end i think we have a novel that we could call as um, cinematic you know i would call uh, boy on the blue mountain and the entire Uh, novel series the world series as a as a as a cinematic novel series that's one of the exciting things which uh, obviously you know i'm i have a background of writing movies and um so obviously i was also um this is a kind of a challenge for me as well as a writer Now you're pushing the capacity of uh, your imagination, your your way of using words, and um, I guess to a, to a certain extent we are happy with the result. Yeah. Also, uh, uh, there was another reason why because uh, you know we are we have created a an entirely different world, a world that doesn't exist actually. You know? I'm talking about the later books, the second and third, and so when the The, the issue with writing a series is that you are not focusing only on one book. An author has to have a mapping of uh, the entire series, at least to have a vision of you know what is going to come, and then you work from there backwards. And you know that's how the prequel book happened. This book, the first book, Boy on the Blue Mountain, is where everything starts. But it doesn't mean that I started thinking from here. Actually, I was actually thinking backwards, and then. wrote this book so particularly because um, um i wanted to bring in some exotic uh, it is an exotic world we're talking about a fictitious an island named kohuma and uh, it, it's a tribe it's a it's a, a people who we are not uh, familiar with and uh, for that particular reason and and to maintain that exotic nature of the the setting um i thought bringing in a sense of uh, imagery uh, imagery is an and, and sense of that visual richness would have would be helpful to uh, you know making the setting credible to read so that also demanded a sort of a visual writing from my side when you read my hope is that the reader would start seeing that world start experiencing what the character is going through to a large extent all all writers are aiming for that obviously but you know how far i could go a little bit more you know, that was the experiment and um, i don't know i mean a reader has to say you know what happened uh, what effect that has uh, made on him or her but i'm i'm hoping that uh, uh, 
a reader would get to see the world that I have created. Up to 30 illustrations we are using in the bodies and on paper drawings, particularly done in a woodcut, European woodcut uh, style. Uh, those illustrations were done, done by Saini Das in Calcutta. She did a marvelous job and she surprised us with her drawings. And so we, we decided to use those uh, illustrations as chapter dividers. And the cover, um, the artist who did, um, his name is Titi Luotong. He is a Thailand, is an artist in Thailand, a digital artist. We bought his digital work and then uh, one of our in-house artists, uh, Razi Muniz, he uh, did the enhancement. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, the book will be quite uh, fanciful to look at and it will have an embossed title and all that. So. Basically trying to make a, a, a book as a more an alluring product, you know, good to look at, good to hold, feel and it's also, we are also using imported uh, um, book print paper and all that, so from a Finnish company. So we're trying to make a product that is truly international from, from here. That's the idea of uh, Bodhi's. Bodhi has a vision of creating books that would uh, that can match up with any uh, global publisher. I mean, that's the vision. How far we get there remains to be seen. On a, on a more peri peripheral level, it's about the boy, the, the protagonist. He's a 13-year-old boy. And what happens to him and his uh, young friend, uh, Shimogo, who he starts missing from the age of 13 when he uh, saw her in a dream and then he starts inquiring where did she disappear you know they were very good friends even from childhood so now he's starting to um, he's wondering where ha where have the her family gone and what happened to her so that's the the mystery level uh, in the novel and then you also have the the political maneuvering and manipulation of uh, among people and what happens to his father and mother who who were actually the king and queen of the uh, the, of the clan and um, how this um, this drama of conflict progresses into a bigger uh, drama that uh, affects the entire world where the boy gets a prophecy and about um, how the world is going to change, how the earth is going to crack into um, some planets. And so basically this boy on the blue mountain gets the prophecy in his sleep uh, about um, the forthcoming galaxy called Earthopia. So, that, so uh, a lesser drama grows into a greater drama that even affects the reader. You know, that's that's the idea. So somewhere, you know, on a remote uh, island, a mountain island, uh, something happens. But then eventually, that percolates into a, a larger uh, apocalyptic event that would affect uh, even the reader of the book. So that's the uh, scaling of uh, the theme. And um, and obviously, book two will carry on with this uh, revenge reversed. So that's the that's the way the the plot works. But then we also have a very unlikely hero, uh, a superhero who's who's actually I think I ha I haven't read any thriller novels or fantasy novels where the the hero is an enlightened person. You know, in in this book, Theo de Lumen is not a human at all. He's not a human. Um, so what is he and how does he work through this entire drama and what is his role, what does he do to the remaining humans in Earthopia? Those are all the subjects of the, the book. Like I said earlier, uh, thematically there is this fictitious elements and fiction that would thrill us but then there is also the element of wisdom that flows through Theo. So you have an entire corpus of human conflict happening and then you also have a non-human hero running you know through the whole uh, plot giving us uh, gems of insights and also how he interferes in the affairs of human and 
so that's the so that together when we put together all these books and the entire uh, time different timelines in the story you get the whole series called magical chronicles of earth and yeah. that's in short uh, the series and the book is all about break the suspense when are we going to get the book in hand uh, or <laughs> is we, if it is uh, online you know and so how how are, how are the what's the plan for that yeah so the um, it will be a, a pre publishing offer is given from february 3rd so from february 3rd you get a pre pre order link uh, where you can order the book uh, and get it autographed <laughs> and uh, at free shipping and uh, we are still deciding on the price but uh, so we are getting an author signed copy yes the pre order uh, all the pre orders will get uh, a copy that has been signed by the author and uh, also free shipping we are not charging for the shipping but the final price has been decided but we are keep trying to keep it as modest as possible by february end of february shipping will happen first of march first week of march you will get the book in hand and yes there will be kindle version as well kindle for when I mean, india kindle and the overseas kindle um march we might think of having a release uh, i don't know i mean i don't know how social things are now so we are still confused about that but anyway people i mean you get the book to read for march so you can book in february and get the offer